Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials, I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is part one of my constructors tutorial series, so let's go ahead and open up my website here, javacjava.com. You can click on the Begin button, and all of the tutorials are located here basically in like a good learning order, right? At the very bottom, you'll see Constructors Part 1. And over here in my menu, I've, I've also got Java OOP, my object-oriented programming tutorials, and it's over here too as well. So these tutorials in this list are more related to object-oriented programming, whereas the other tutorials are related to just about everything Java, but you'll see it in both places. So a constructor is an important part of every class and it provides a way to execute statements as an object is created. The topic of constructors is quite extensive and describing many of the features of a constructor requires advanced topics that I haven't covered in my tutorials thus far. A constructor resides inside of the class body and at a bare minimum it consists of the exact class name followed by a pair of parentheses and a pair of curly braces. So here's a simple empty constructor structure. So we've got our class, and then we've got our class declaration, our class name here. And inside of the class body, which is the open and closing curly braces, we've, we've added in a constructor. Right? And the constructor name has to match the class name exactly, case sensitive and everything. Then a pair of parentheses, and then a body for the constructor here too, or a code block, right? By an opening and closing curly brace. So every class has to have a constructor whether you write one in or not. If you do not write a constructor into your class, the Java compiler will insert a default constructor into the compiled bytecode. Up until now, yeah, we haven't put any constructors in. We didn't even know what they were, right? So it's been putting them in for us. Okay. Now the default constructor is special, and I will discuss it in a separate tutorial. In this tutorial, I will create a constructor for my Acme class and have it display a string literal to the console. This is going to be a short tutorial because my next tutorial will be discussing the new operator. Understanding the new operator is critical to moving on to the next constructor concepts. Let's come down here, highlight this, hit Control C to copy or right click and select copy. Let's move the browser off screen, go down to start, search, type in CMD. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier, you can go to start run, type in CMD. Okay. Um, once the command prompt comes up, we'll type in Java C. You should see all this stuff scroll by. If it doesn't, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing on with the tutorials. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory and tells it, backslash tells it to go to the root. MD is make directory Java. I already have it, but if um, you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. CD Java. Now we're going to make a directory and we're going to call this uh, constructors1. And we're going to change to that folder and we're going to call this notepad constructors1.java. Okay. Control V to paste. And let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so um, I could have put this Acme in its own Acme.java, but for the purposes of this tutorial, it was a little bit faster, so we'll just save some time there. Uh, but basically, what we've got up here is our constructor1 class is the one with the main method entry point that we'll be invoking from the Java command line tool. And it simply creates an Acme, uh, Acme type, right, um, reference variable A, and then we're assigning that, here's the new keyword, an Acme object, okay? So the reference variable will contain a reference to a new Acme object. Now let's take a look at the, the Acme class here. So all is pretty, pretty straightforward here. We got our class name, and then inside of the class body, we have our constructor right here. Now, it's no coincidence that the constructor here, including the parentheses, is identical to this up here. So, um, but we'll go over that in in a future tutorial there. But one thing that is 100% set in stone is that the name of the class must match, well the name of the constructor I should say, must match the name of the class. You could say vice versa, but it seems a little bit more proper to say the name of the constructor must may, may be the name of the class. Okay, uh, there's our opening closing parentheses. 
And then we've got our code block for the Acme constructor. So, in the open and closing parentheses, and then basically, as the Acme object is created, the constructor is going to be called, and then it'll execute everything that we put inside of the Acme um, constructor body. So, basically, that'll display to the console this string literal right here, this code statement executed when the Acme object was initialized. All right, let's go ahead and compile it and run it. Let's clear our screen. Java C, constructors1.java, no error message. And now we're going to invoke that class, run it. And we got this code statement executed when the Acme object was initialized. So you can see up here, right? We did nothing more than initialize um, the reference variable A to a new Acme object. That caused the constructor to run um, which basically initializes everything. You could think of the constructor as constructing the object, right? And they could have called it the initializer, but I guess they chose it to call it the constructor, but it's essentially the same thing. Okay, well, let's go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, and leave you with some final thoughts on this tutorial there. So as you can see, the constructor is used to execute statements as the object is being initialized. Now be sure to watch my next tutorial on the new operator. After that tutorial is complete, I will pick back up with the next part of the constructor tutorials. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.